Hello and welcome back everyone. Epinephrine is the most widely used vasoconstrictor in dentistry and overdose reaction of vasoconstrictor such as epinephrine are rare but they do happen and because of their widespread use especially in the field of dentistry it is really important to know about these overdose reactions and how to avoid them and what should be done when these overdose reactions do happen. So as stated vasoconstrictors such as epinephrine are very commonly used in dentistry. The most well-known use of epinephrine is in local anesthetic cartridges supplied around the world. The use of vasoconstrictor in a local anesthetic prolongs the use of local anesthetic effect on that area and it also helps in controlling bleeding on the surgical side. There are many different combinations of epinephrine available in the local anesthetic cartridges. Let's take lidocaine for example. Lidocaine formulations in dental cartridges are available in many different forms but the most commonly used is the formulation with 2% lidocaine with 1 part by 100,000 parts of epinephrine. This information on the cartridge suggests that in the cartridge along with other contents there is 2% lidocaine and also for every 100,000 parts there is 1 part of epinephrine present in the cartridge. If this number decreases to 1 part by 50,000, then the concentration of epinephrine has actually doubled. On the contrary, if the number is increased to 1 part by 200,000 parts, then the concentration of epinephrine is almost half. And using multiple of these cartridges without having the knowledge of maximum recommended dose of epinephrine or local anesthetics can result in an overdose reaction. In the Handbook of Local Anesthesia by Melamed, limits of epinephrine use in dental cartridges are outlined in a table. In this table, we can see that a cartridge containing 1 part by 100,000 parts of epinephrine can be safely used in a healthy patient for up to 10 cartridges under recommended local anesthetic dose. But only 2 cartridges should be limited to a cardiac patient. Hence, local anesthetics should be very carefully used in cardiac patients. The use of 1 part by 50,000 parts of epinephrine is not recommended for pain control in dentistry and is usually recommended for controlling bleeding when required in a controlled manner. Hence, typically a concentration of 1 part by 100,000 parts of epinephrine along with lidocaine is recommended and hence it is the most commonly available cartridge in the market. When used under these circumstances, epinephrine or even local anesthetic overdose is extremely rare. However, vasoconstrictors are also used in the gingival retraction cord. The gingival retraction cord is used before impressions are taken for crown and bridge procedures in order to retract the gingiva and allow for a better record of tooth margins. The reason for the use of vasoconstrictor in the gingival retraction cord is to control the bleeding on the gingival margins. Epinephrine overdose is more common when used in these gingival retraction cords. That is because epinephrine is readily absorbed through gingival epithelium that has been abraded during the dental procedures like crown preparations. Approximately 64-94% to of applied epinephrine is noted to get absorbed into the cardiovascular system through the gingival margins. And because of such a high percentage of absorption of epinephrine from the abraded gingival margins, the ADA or the American Dental Association with regards to the use of epinephrine in the gingival retraction cord states the following in accepted dental therapeutics. Since effective agents which are devoid of systemic effects are available, it is not advisable to use epinephrine for gingival retraction and its use is absolutely contradicted in individuals with a history of cardiovascular disease. Hence from the entire discussion on epinephrine, we can conclude that it is recommended to use the minimum concentration of vasoconstrictor in normal individuals with extreme caution in cardiac patients, especially when it comes to gingival retraction cord. In fact, it is better to use other agents and to avoid the use of epinephrine in gingival retraction cords, especially in cardiac patients. But even after all this, how do we know if an epinephrine overdose has occurred or not? The signs that help to diagnose epinephrine overdose in a patient may include sharp elevation in blood pressure of the patient, primarily the elevation in the systolic blood pressure. The patient may also have an elevated heart rate. There may even be possible cardiac dysarrhythmias because as we know that epinephrine can also directly affect the CVS. Symptoms presented by the patient during the epinephrine overdose may include a sense of fear and anxiety and restlessness. 
the patient may complain of a thrombing headache and may have perspirations and difficulty in breathing. The patient may also complain of weakness and dizziness. So what can be done if an epinephrine overdose has occurred? What can be the management done in this situation? Most cases of epinephrine overdose are of such short lived that little or no management is necessary. However, on some rare occasions, the reaction may be prolonged and some management is desirable in these prolonged situations. The first thing to do is to remove the source of epinephrine. The injection or the gingival retraction cord should be removed and no further injection should be administered. The source of the epinephrine must be cut off. Stopping the injection of local anesthetic does not remove the epinephrine that has already been deposited, but release of endogenous epinephrine and norepinephrine from the adrenal medulla and nerve endings is lessened. Once the anxiety inducing stimulus, in this case epinephrine, is eliminated. After that, basic management protocols shall be followed, which are P, A, B, C, and D. Position the patient in a semi comfortable position. A semi supine or erect position minimizes any further elevation in cerebral blood pressure. ABC protocol is assessed as adequate whether the patient is conscious, talking, breathing properly, and so on. After that, definitive treatment is provided. First, reassure the patient that these signs and symptoms are very short lived and will be over in a very short time. Anxiety and restlessness are common clinical manifestation of epinephrine overdose. The vital signs of the patients should be observed and the oxygen may be administered. Blood pressure and heart rate should be checked every 5 minutes and any striking elevation should be noted. Oxygen should be administered only if necessary. However, it should be remembered that oxygen is not indicated in the management of a hyperventilation case because it can exacerbate symptoms which could possibly lead to carpopedal tetanus. Finally, the patient should be permitted to remain in the dental chair as long as it is necessary to recover. Epinephrine overdose is rare but they do occur and may prove to be a problem in cardiac patients. A good history can always help to reduce or avoid the risk of such overdose reactions. And hence, proper history taking should always be a part of a doctor's arsenal and should never be underestimated. But these types of problems can occur with even the most experienced of the doctors and hence remaining calm and composed under these circumstances and reducing the anxiety of the patient is perhaps the most crucial part of handling any dental emergency. So I hope this video was helpful for all of you. I will meet you all next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.